Welcome again to Family Matters. The debate about whether the definition of marriage should be further redefined to allow polygamy and group marriage has surfaced in the UK, with the Green Party leader declaring that they are open to consultation on legalising marriages involving three or more people. The politicians in New Zealand worked hard to silence the debate here around opening up marriage to any number of loving adults. I think so that New Zealanders would not see the true consequences of weakening the definition of marriage from being just one man and one woman. At the time, we were accused of misleading, scaremongering and being dishonest. However, our prediction is unfortunately fast becoming a reality. As we argued, if marriage is redefined once, as it has been, what is to stop it being redefined again? Allowing only same-sex marriage on the basis of love and human rights and so-called equality would then open the door for those arguing for polygamous and group marriage. Why should discrimination against these loving adults be okay? Group marriage may be illegal now, but it wasn't that long ago that same-sex marriage also was unheard of. During the debate on redefining marriage in 2013, Family First produced evidence that once the definition of marriage was weakened, there would be strong lobbying by groups to go further. There's plenty of examples. Green activists in Australia have established the Polymory Action Lobby to petition Parliament to allow polygamous marriage. Two reports for the Canadian government recommended the decriminalisation of polygamy, one arguing that the move was justified by the need to attract more skilled Muslim immigrants. The government has resisted the call thus far. In their 2006 statement, Beyond Same-Sex Marriage, more than 300 LGBT and allied scholars and advocates, including prominent Ivy League professors, called for the legal recognition of sexual relationships involving more than two partners. A 2009 Newsweek story entitled Polyamory, The Next Sexual Revolution, estimates that there are more than half a million open polyamorous families living in America. A former Dutch MP, Boris Dietrich, who led the charge behind the first same-sex marriage legislation in the world, admitted that group marriages of three or more people is the next logical step. In New Zealand, a fringe Wellington-based activist group, the Queer Avengers, said that same-sex marriage was not the end of the line, and polyamory was one of the next battles. In a government review of benefits in the UK in 2008, husbands with multiple wives were given the go-ahead to claim extra welfare benefits. Polygamous marriages would be recognised formally by the state so long as the weddings took place in countries where the arrangement is legal. And in Canada, school posters produced as part of the Toronto District School Board's Safe and Positive Spaces was heavily criticised for featuring an image of polygamy. Now you may be saying, what's the problem? What's wrong with group marriage and polygamy? Well, international research consistently shows the following. Women in polygamous relationships are at an elevated risk of physical, sexual and psychological harm. They tend to have less autonomy, higher rates of marital dissatisfaction and lower levels of self-esteem. They also fear worse economically. Children in polygamous families tend to suffer more emotional, behavioural and physical problems and are also at enhanced risk of psychological and physical abuse and neglect. They're exposed to harmful gender stereotypes. Polygamy also institutionalises gender inequality. In fact, a study's just been released which found that men in polygamous relationships were nearly five times more likely to suffer heart disease than those with one spouse. The evidence demonstrates that polygamy is associated with very substantial harms, and society is right to avoid them. There is opposition, even in countries where it's been culturally accepted. Marriage has always been and will always be between a man and a woman. Ultimately, no government or court can change that truth. So regardless of how the state defines marriage, we'll continue to address the importance of one man, one woman marriage to families, society, and especially for children who have a right to both a mother and a father. We need to do all we can to promote and protect marriage. Please stand with us as we stand for marriage. Thanks for watching. I'm Bob McCoskey.